So hello and welcome to today's video. So let's start off with winter as a whole because there are a few weird changes to the season itself. For a start off, chapter 3 may not have actually been set in winter, but rather late autumn, and possibly chapter 4 was set in winter instead. Now the evidence for this lies in the pre-release trailers and some of the game's files, where the Christmas special trailer of Buddy showed a fair bit of chapter 4 but in a weird Christmas setting, and seemed to focus on the jocks a lot. This is even weirder when you realise this Christmas trailer was released about 2 months after Buddy first came out. There are also some other early trailers which show small snippets of chapter 3 missions not being set in winter either, but this may have just been Rockstar getting footage for trailers because we can still see the barricade behind Jimmy and Lola, which is there until chapter 3 is unlocked, and this can sort of be replicated if you use a super mod or a cutscene viewer mod in chapters 1 or 2. Secondly, all of the chapter 3 cutscenes have two audio files. One is abbreviated with W, which stands for winter. Now if you listen to them both, they sound almost exactly the same. But if you listen very closely, you can hear one small change, which is the sound of footsteps, where the winter file has the sound of snow crunching, and the non-winter one uses the normal sound of concrete. And no other chapter actually has this. Now thirdly, in my official strategy guide for Buddy, if you go to the chapter 3 section and look at wrong part of town, weirdly, the radar is still there in its normal style, not white overload that usually is. And in the screenshots provided, Lola, Chad and Algie are all in their usual outfits, not their winter ones. So this could mean that winter in chapter 3 was a late addition, especially since this like, guide was released I think is about a couple of months before Buddy actually came out, so it kind of actually says that Rockstar didn't really do this until very late into Buddy's development. Now initially, whatever Jimmy wore would have an effect on him, as identified by Clothstock.dat. Now um, what I sort of mean by that is like, this file lists different warm levels for Jimmy, with obviously the coldest being 0 and the hottest being 6. So the file sort of lists them like this, 0 is bear, na, none. Number 2 is cold, which basically means bear arm. Number 4 is warm, which is like short sleeve and number 6 is hot. Now not only does this tell us a bit about Jimmy's customization because of the fact it says bare arm and above that is like bare, it could mean that Jimmy may have had the choice to go shirtless at one point, but this was changed. Now this feature was actually later worked into Red Dead Redemption 2, but interestingly despite this entire feature being cut, Chapter 3 has the only remains of this feature. Now it's not really noticeable, but if you make Jimmy wear short sleeve shirts or a tank top, or shorts or anything cold in the snow, then just stand completely still, Jimmy will start to shiver. But what some of you may have missed here is whenever Jimmy shivers, he always loses a small bit of health. So how about a completely cut minigame? No, wait, not a minigame, two minigames. Because once again, my cut activities of body video has aged poorly because I missed two other minigames. Now the first one of these are snowball fights. And yes, snowball fights are in the final game because in chapter three, Jimmy can just pick up a snowball any place and then just throw it at somebody and they'll get into a snowball fight with him. So how is it cut then? Well first of all I'm not talking about the snowball fights in free mode, I'm talking about full on snowball wars, a bit like a team deathmatch kind of thing, and pranks to go with them. Now all of this doesn't work, but the minigame name is free underscore r06 and it still exists in the scripts, and it will crash your game near instantly. But thanks to the leftover files we do have a small bit to go off. For one, in the text files there are a few lines left over which read Snowball fight Hit person with snowball Snowball challenge complete I'd get rid of that snowball before it melts Snowball victims And hit people with snowballs And finally, student snowball Now inside the trigger image, there are at least three known locations where this snowball fight minigame would have taken place One is on the gym grounds, in the football field The other one is the gym grounds and strangely, Old Bull Fail near the Ackerberry Clothes Store. All that's really known about this is it most likely would have used these unused snow barricades, which coincidentally also only appear in another completely cut mission with the motel in Old Bull of Town. I mean, Bull of Town, not Old Bull of Town, sorry about that. Now the reason this was cut was most likely due to the fact this minigame would have only been available in winter, and it would have been a massive waste of time to have this one activity locked away for five out of six chapters. 
and not even be available again even after you've beaten the main story. So it kind of makes perfect sense to remove the game and instead work it into the winter season as an attention to detail kind of thing instead. Now secondly, because the minigames are taking place on Jock and Preppy Turf, it seems likely that Jimmy may have had matches against like all clicks or something like that. But because of the text files which state like hit people with snowballs, students snowballed and all that, it could possibly imply that maybe Jimmy had to go into hiding, he just like lob snowballs at people who are passing by, a bit like um, Balls of Snow in that Scholarship Edition exclusive mission. Unfortunately, we may never actually know. Now, the other cut minigame is snow shoveling. And once again, yes, this is sort of used in the final game, as it's used for the detention in Chapter 3 whenever Jimmy gets, well, busted or whatever. But initially, Jimmy did have the option to do this as a job to earn money during the winter season while the lawn mowing activity isn't available. Now, everything about this was cut except for a single line of text, which actually was supposed to be displayed on the stat page, which says money earned snow shoveling. Now, personally, I'd assume that this would have taken place in Old War Fail due to houses with driveways that really aren't used much, and given the detention minigame of Jimmy having to sort of like, um, you know, avoid the cars, well, if you get bust, well, if you get busted and have to do detention about four times, um, you will have to do it in the parking lot and you'll be told to avoid the cars. So it kind of makes sense that this snow shoveling job may be available in like Old Boy Fail or something like that, you know, when Jimmy has to avoid the cars. That one's just my own personal thoughts. There are also a few unseen winter appearances of some characters who don't actually appear at all in Chapter 3. Now the first one is Zoe Taylor, who wears a thick black jacket over a tank top, but still keeps her jean skirt and boots. Now this model is sort of used in the street races for go-karts, but it's quite difficult to see because of everybody just like, speeding around and that. But if you actually go into a cutscene in winter with her in it, you know through modding, her eyes are incredibly demonic. I would love to teach that guy a lesson, he bullies everyone. You know, he goes jogging every day and regularly uses the porta potties in the park. Yuck. Yeah. So if we could catch him in one on top of a hill, then Mr. Burton could have a really interesting time in it. The second one is Ted Thompson, who now has his sleeves down and his letterman jacket done up entirely. And as we know, Ted Thompson does not appear at all in the final game. Well, he does, but not in Chapter 3, you know. The third character is Edgar Munson, who now wears a beanie with a long sleeved orange shirt, but his shirt is still only buttoned up at the top. Now the fourth and fifth characters are the Asylum Orderlies, Theo and Gregory, which is weird since Gregory himself is a completely cut character, so this is a bit more proof that he was a very late cut to the game. Also, these appearances aren't seen, but they were planned because the mission Galloway Away was going to be in Chapter 3, where the Asylum would also be unlocked. And the sixth character is Mr. Hattrick. Now yes, Mr. Hattrick does appear in the final game, yes, and he can also be seen in free mode very rarely. But his cutscene model, however, isn't seen at all in the game. Well, his winter cutscene model, shall I say. Now, if you use mods to set the season to winter and then watch the Hattrick vs. Galloway cutscene, you will see his winter model here is a bit different to his free roam model. No alcohol on school grounds! Uh. You're drunk! Uh -huh. I can smell it on your breath. Uh -huh. I can see it in your eyes. I'm not drunk. Drunk? In charge of children. And finally, on Buddy's curtain room floor page, somebody claims that the snowmen we see in chapter 3 were supposed to be like the Halloween pumpkins and tombstones, which would give us a reward if we destroyed them all. Now, as we all know, in the final game, all that happens on Christmas Day is Jimmy just wakes up and the clock is disabled until Jimmy goes to the office to collect his present. But if you follow Buddy Beta, you'll know that Rockstar were incredibly, well, lazy with Bully, and Christmas is no exception, as they cut out a hell of a lot of Bully's Christmas holidays, which, in my opinion, is more on par with modern day Christmas events in modern games. So let's get on with these cut and changed activities then. So first of all, there was an entirely cut and deleted mission involving Trevor, Pedro, and Justin in the boys' dorm, which was cut alongside the boys' dorm second floor, as that's where this little activity could be overheard. So after getting up on Christmas Day, Jimmy can walk down the second floor hall and he could overhear them saying this. So Harrington House has purchased presents for the student body. That's really nice. To make it a little more interesting, we've hidden them all around town. Ah, oh, whenever I go outside, I get beat up and snowballs thrown at me. I hate winter. 
The risk-reward ratio only adds to the enjoyment, my young poor friend. And after this, it seems like there would be a new collectible for Jimmy to find around the map of Bullworth. Alongside the garden gnomes, the grottos and gremlins cards, the rubber bands, the transistors, the pumpkins and the tombstones, and that would be Christmas presents. Now this mission does exist in the game's files, but it will crash the game near instantly. But thanks to other leftover files, we may know of one possible location for this, which coincidentally is also part of its own beta mystery. So in Bullworth Town, near the back of the abandoned cinema, on the stairs, there's a weird interaction point where the player can interact with something, but nothing actually happens here. The leftover files for the presence, however, do actually list one location, which is actually near this place. So it's possible that these two might be linked somehow. Now sadly, all of this was cut very early on as there's no other files for Jimmy, Justin or anything for the presents themselves, but it's very likely that these were added as timed exclusive collectibles to add to the Christmas vibe, a bit like how the pumpkins and tombstones were there for Halloween. Now what these presents contained however is still a mystery, and it will most likely stay that way. My own personal thoughts is that these could be something like, possibly like a um, care package, I don't know the right word to use where you might get like a random weapon or a free item of clothing. You know, a bit like how the lockers work. Or Jimmy would have to find each and every present himself. And after collecting them all, he would unlock a brand new outfit, which may also be possible because in the text files, there's another line which says you have unlocked TBD, which I did mention in part one of the beta winter. So this could be the only remains of these Christmas present leftovers or part of another collectible that Rockstar never finished. Now secondly, if Jimmy actually got busted during Christmas and had to do detention, Dr. Kravelsnitch would say, would it be too much to ask you to embrace the spirit of Christmas and be good for once? You know how on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, how Bullworth Town and Old Bullworth Vale have Christmas trees in their towns? Well, initially they weren't just, well, they still are there for decorations, but they would actually play a small amount of Christmas tunes if Jimmy got close. And um, yeah, I'm going to play a small sample of these, but if any of them are missing, you know, it's because they're sort of like copyrighted, but yeah, there's four of them, and um, here's a small sample of them all. Also rather weirdly, one of Sean Lee's actual tracks is in the game. Now this is actually unused and the file name is Xmas Favourite Balls, which might actually be a part of the Snowball minigame mentioned in part 1. However, I can't actually play this because, um, as said, this is Sean Lee's actual music and um, is actually copyrighted. That could also be why it was changed, although it could have just been a placeholder. We don't know, but um, I actually can't play it. And the actual track used is called um, My Favourite Things, by Sean Lee, obviously, um, and this Ping Pong Orchestra. So yeah, that's the track name if you want to give it a listen, but I can't play it here. Now, another thing that makes this weird is the fact that Buddy doesn't use a licensed soundtrack like the GTA series has. But at the same time, My Favourite Things actually has a low, a medium and a high variant to it, which means that it probably was going to be in the game at some point. What for, we may never know. I'm still thinking it might have something to do with the Snowball minigame because of the file name. And much like real life, if you head to any store during Christmas, they would be blasting Christmas tunes. Now these were most definitely cut due to copyright reasons as Rockstar used a mix of copyrighted tracks alongside covers of public domain music. So I'll play a small sample of the public domain tracks, but um, before I say that though, even the tattoo parlour in Blue Skies has its own Christmas track, and as you know, the tattoo parlour isn't accessible until chapter 5, which takes place in spring. So this could either imply that the tattoo parlour was going to be in New Coventry, or somewhere else, and Blue Skies was unlocked in chapter 3 instead. Now, um, much like what I said above, if any of these are mute, it's because they're copyrighted and obviously I removed them.
Interestingly, the Christmas missions are the only missions in the entire game that were actually planned to be Scholarship Edition exclusive and were not planned for the PlayStation 2 but then cut like most other cut missions and activities were. And we can sort of see this by the mission list, which typically lists all the missions in a set order. And all the Christmas storyline missions actually share the Jealous Johnny mission ID. However, the Christmas ones have a letter at the end, i.e. 3-01A, and so on. And with the exception of the cutscenes, Jerry Rosenfall did not return to voice any new lines for Jimmy during these missions either. Also, despite Rudy being a very, very minor character who only appears for like, three missions, whoever voiced him actually did the full character work, as there's loads of unused quotes for Rudy in the game's files, doing all kinds of things like browsing stores, conversing with other townsfolk, getting into fights, and you know, all that kind of stuff. Which heavily implies that, like all the other click leaders in Buddy, he was going to be in free mode at one point, but was removed. Most likely because of after Rudy the Red-Nosed Santa, he walks off and is never seen again, and I sort of guess it's implied he left Tane with his newfound wealth or something, but still. So here's a very small sample of his best unheard of quotes. You hungry, kid? Cause I got some leftover knuckle sandwich here. Where's the lingerie section? You know, I used to be just like you when I was your age. And look at me now. <laughs> so now let's get onto the cut content from the Christmas storyline and we'll do it in order starting from Balls of Snow. Which weirdly, seemingly has absolutely zero cut content as there's no unused audio files, there's no unused text or anything really. And that's actually a first for this series because pretty much, well, every other mission in Body has at least five battle changes to them. This one, none. But I do have to make a very small retraction because last week I said that Edgar Munson's winter model went unused. Well, he actually does appear in this mission, walking down the street just before he's hit with a snowball. I guess it's a bit hard to see in the mission, and I guess I'm sort of correct because, you know, this mission isn't on the PS2 version, so... Yeah, let's get on to the second mission, Miracle on Bullworth Street. Now this is probably one of the most incomplete missions of the lot, as only the Santa at the Grotto and his elves have quotes, nobody else actually does. Couple that with that bug where you can just beat the entire mission within 30 seconds by smashing the castle and ignoring anything else, this mission is probably one of the most rushed. But we still have a few changes to go off. First of all, before Jimmy arrives at the grotto, some of the elves will be talking to the parents. Yes, this is sort of used in the final game, but not all the quotes are actually heard. Hey parents, don't you have any control over your kids? Get them in line! What the heck? What do you think this is? Oh, oh. Come on, come on! Step right up! Get your picture taken with Santa Claus! Come on, kiddies! Tell them what you want for Christmas! Yeah! Come on, kids, get in the lineup! And just as Jimmy began his destruction, it seems that Santa was going to be indoors rather than standing outside because of these quotes. What's going on over there? The Santa can't make his list with so much noise! Elves! Are you going to deal with this or what? Are you elves going to deal with this or what? Ho ho ho! Everyone will get their turn, child! Elves, a little help here? Easy, children, it'll be alright! Ho ho ho! Nothing to be afraid of! Santa's here! Ho ho ho! While Jimmy was destroying the grotto, Santa would actually give orders to the elves to actually go and beat up Jimmy for him. Get that... Get that hooligan out of here! Take him out now, or I'll have you cleaning reindeer poop for years! What am I paying you guys for? To make toys? Get that hooligan out of here! Blacklist that child! He's off my list for good! Grab him and hold him down! You won't get away with this young man! You're going to pay for this! I want him alive! Get back here at once! I have never in all my years seen such behavior! Elves! You're useless! And after completely destroying Santa's Grotto, there's actually a completely deleted cutscene. And, um, well, only the audio remains, but this is what it sounds like. Oh, that is it! I quit! Ah, oh, ah! Oh. Notice the much different sounding Santa here, as the one in the final mission is a bit more stereotypical Santa sounding than this guy. That's it! I've had it with these shenanigans, I quit! So let's get on to the third mission now, which is Nutcracking. Now much like Miracle on Bullworth Street, no one has any new quotes recorded for this mission, which is weird because you'd think that Ms. Peters would like have some quote about being happy or furious, depending on how Jimmy did during his performance, but no, there's none here. But even then we do have some very, very minor changes. For some reason, the camera angles in the cutscene are different on the Wii to the Xbox and PC versions, 
and some people have said that on the Wii version of Bully, you don't get the Nutcracker outfit after beating the mission while you do on the Xbox and PC. Now during Jimmy's performance, there's actually a few unused lines of text which basically tell you how you're doing alongside unique mission fail reasons, and these lines are, don't lose the beat, stay on time, you're playing too fast, you're playing too slow, you ruined the concert, you threw off the band, and you wrecked the show. That's pretty much all the changes for Nutcracking, so let's get on to the fourth and final mission in this storyline, which is actually the most, well, full of cut content, should I say. Don't know if there's a word I can describe it, but yeah, which is Rudy the Red Nose Santa. Now this one is already notorious for being a really weird mission, most notably for the characters they use in the mission, where like all the characters have personality transplants, but let's ignore that for the moment and just go straight back to the beginning. Because it seems Rockstar left the original placeholder intro and outro to this mission, well, sort of, because of unused text files, which basically just say this. Scene 1. Rudy. Get objects. Jimmy. Okay. Scene 2. Rudy. Thanks, kid. Do you have a camera? And scene 3. Rudy. Thanks, kid. Hiccup. Here's your cut. I also want to add on, there's another placeholder line which just says RW gameplay pending, which I have absolutely no idea what that's supposed to mean. Well, I do, but not how it relates to this mission exactly. So, what about the actual characters themselves then? Because many people have noticed a really weird change of characters that they use for the mission, where they have completely different voice actors and even more different personalities, like how Sheldon is like a teacher's pet, but in this mission he's throwing a tantrum and trying to throttle Santa. Now, while this was just reusing characters, if you follow Buddy Beta, you'll know that more little kids were planned for the game. So it's possible that these kids were supposed to be some of the characters that Rockstar initially planned for this mission rather than just reusing some existing ones. Now weirdly, some characters like Pedro and Gloria actually have two different voices for this mission. One more teenage sounding and one more child sounding. And these characters don't even appear, well at least the teenage versions anyway. The bum Santa himself has loads of unused quotes during his um, grotto sessions. Hey there little puke, come and sit on my lap. Santa don't like waiting. Get over here. Santa's thirsty. Let's get this over with. What are you looking at? Uh, right. Take a seat. It's kids like you that make me feel I'm not really real after all. You think that smells? I took a dump in the alley. Yeah, I still got it. Grimey River. Oh, yeah! Oh, no! What the hell just happened there? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I get it. Your little hoser. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Bet you don't know that. You don't want to get in my bad books, kid. I got dignity, see? Dignity! Did I just black out again? You better hope I just hallucinated that. You ever been to the North Pole? <laughs> what? A potato? Ever had a donut sandwich? Is there anyone on this planet as generous as me? I'll see to it that this Christmas is the best Christmas ever. You're breaking my heart, kid. Can't you just let me wallow in misery? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. Listen up. I won't be repeating this. You must really like coal or something. Sin is thirsty. Let's get this over with. You sound friendly enough, but I know you're tight. Even then, most of these quotes are entirely unused, and we'll start off with Sheldon, and I really bloody hope that YouTube doesn't detect this as being kid-friendly because of the incredibly young voice actors. Christmas sucks. I never get what I want. Never ever. This sucks. I want the new Super Ultra Fighter Turbo Plus Alpha Remix Limited Edition and the Super Ultra Fighter Turbo Plus Alpha Remix 12 button joystick. And I want the Super Ultra Fighter Turbo Plus Alpha Remix Pajamas. And the Super Ultra Fighters Turbo Plus Alpha Remix Lunchbox. And the Super Ultra Fighters Turbo Plus Alpha Remix CD. But not the Remix version, I already have that one. Um, oh wait, there was one more. What was it? Oh man, I forgot. I'm gonna have to start over. Now, where was I? Oh yeah, now I remember. A skateboard, got it! I'm a skateboard! Hear me, old man! I want my skateboard right now! I want my present now! Zero emissions. Even though I don't believe in you and you smell, I still think you're a nice man. How come your beard's yellow? 
I want to go! It's stinky and wet up here! Oh, no! No! Why do you smell like the toilet, Santa? And one final change to the mission is how you would take photos, where if you zoomed in a bit too much, the game would tell you to retake it zoomed out. Or just flat out insult you by telling you your pictures are terrible because of the following lines. Zoom out to take a good picture. You can't take a good picture zoomed in like that. You took awful pictures. And I don't know why this was removed because, well, you know, taking incredibly zoomed in pictures is horrible. So that about wraps up the cut content for Rudy the Red Nose Santa storyline, and I really hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more body-based content than that. So thank you for watching, and have a great day.